Nairobi. Kenya's capital is stressful, expensive, dangerous, but also fascinating and modern. From the place of cool water, in the past century this city has grown to a population of millions. The heart of East Africa. For the economy of the plantations, the railway was vital. In the middle of the green Uhuru Gardens stands a 24-meter tall monument which commemorates Kenya's independence from colonial rule. In the National Museum, there is an excellent overview of the country's history, its varied people, flora and fauna. In Snake Park, one can learn about various poisonous snakes and giant tortoises. Nairobi is also a beautiful city and has the most pleasant climate in Kenya, plus some large leisure parks. On the perimeter of the city, near the National Park, the city's inhabitants treat themselves to the famous adventure restaurant Carnivore. Here the different varieties of meat found in Kenya are grilled and served to perfection. Set before a modern skyline of office buildings, the Uhuru Park is the meeting place for many of the large events held in the world's youngest metropolis. Jambo Jambo, welcome to Kenya. Kingdom of Wild Animals. Welcome to Lake Naivasha, first lake of the Great Rift Valley. Two million years ago, during the continental drift, massive natural forces ripped open the Earth's crust, which caused its surface to sink. Located at a height of 2,000 meters, this lake belongs to one of the few freshwater lakes in the Great Rift Valley. The water's too cold for crocodiles, but hippos and water bucks appear to favor it. The 250 square kilometer lake is almost 15 meters deep and surrounded by four mountains. An amazing array of birds can be observed by bird lovers amongst water lily beds and papyrus reeds. More than 400 species populate the freshwater lake and fish and frogs abound in its crystal clear water.
Here at Lake Naivasha, the British painter Joy Adamson raised Elsa the lioness and her cubs, the heroes of the famous film Born Free. During the day, the hippos spend most of their time in the water. They submerge for long periods and only surface when they need air. In the Great Rift Valley, there are seven of the largest lakes in Kenya. The Great Rift Valley is so deeply etched in the earth that it can be clearly seen from space. The locals say Kenya lies in the middle of heaven. However, East Africa, the cradle of mankind, is situated in a unique and natural paradise. The boat takes visitors to Crescent Island, a small magical island in the middle of the lake, on which all the animals were introduced by man. Dense forest and open grassland are a feast to the eye. Gazelles, impalas and water bucks graze happily side by side. Free from lions and leopards, there's no danger here. In the past decade, large areas of Kenya were declared as national parks or game reserves. Without conservation, little of this fragile ecosystem's unusual variety of flora and fauna would have survived. Since the Kenya Wildlife Service has managed the national parks, poaching has been greatly reduced and a percentage of the entrance fees for the parks directly benefits the local people.
This all helps to ensure that the balance of nature is preserved. Just 50 kilometers north of Lake Naivasha lies the Great Rift Valley's most famous lake, Lake Nakuru. The Maasai named the nearby kraal Enakuro, place of whirling dust. Lake Nakuru is an El Dorado for birds. Thousands of flamingos populate the lake's shallow shores. Pelicans also favor the placid, soda-saturated lake, which is almost 1,800 meters above sea level. Not without reason did the British biologist Peter Scott describe the view of the lake as the largest ornithological spectacle on Earth. The peaceful coexistence of animals has a calming effect on those who observe them. And on its lush shores, even buffalo graze. In 1967, Lake Nakuru became Africa's first national park for the conservation of birds and by 1969 had expanded to its present size. More than 120 workers tend to the various areas of the park 24 hours a day. In the yellow bark of acacia trees, Calobus monkeys can be seen in the south of the park. When the park's fencing was completed in 1987, the introduction of predators began, including 36 lions from many parts of Kenya. Only two tourist lodges are located in the park, but outside the secure area there are a mixed variety of 20 hotels. Thank you. 
The rules of nature must be maintained. The local health police of the wild see to it that, after the vultures have finished, nothing remains. On tree branches, leopards sleep for many hours during the day. Hundreds of zebras and buffaloes graze together peacefully all day long. Kenya is known and revered as the home of the safari, the most impressive that Africa has to offer, the most beautiful and at the same time the last of Earth's great animal paradises. Here at close hand one can still experience the full magic of Africa. In these protected parks, wild animals enjoy normal living conditions and multiply accordingly. Many young animals populate this vast area. Fortunately, since 1987, the park's game wardens have introduced 43 black and 28 white rhinos. Whether or not Lake Nakuru's nature and wildlife can be maintained will depend upon how the people here can meet future ecological climatic challenges. Further north in the Great Rift Valley is Lake Bogoria, formerly named Lake Hannington, a nature conservation area opened in 1970. Large flocks of flamingos live on the lake, the salty alkaline soda content of which favours the growth of many kinds of algae. The blue-green shining algae is food for tens of thousands of flamingos, which seem to feel good in this odorous, sulfurous sludge.
The reflection of the deep blue sky in the water and the pink of the flamingo flocks combine to create an unusually colourful display which will never be forgotten by those who experience it. The sounds on the shoreline become increasingly closer and more agitated and the rich carpet of bird life constantly changes shape. What makes the birds so fascinating is the deep coral red of their legs and beaks, as well as their salmon pink feathers. Even when feeding, they are constantly on the move. During the mating season, the flamingos stretch out their wings in an impressive display and show off their bright colours. It is estimated that nearly 135 species of birds live here, of which the long-legged flamingos are in the majority and can be seen in large groups. When the huge flocks take off and land and transform the lake into a pink, shining mass, it's easy to understand John Walter Gregory's description, the greatest picture in Africa. On the western shore, hot water springs are forced out from beneath the Earth's surface. Fountains squirt up many meters high, and in the surrounding flooded basin, sulfurous water bubbles forth.
Flamingos like these hot springs, which frequently form a mist. Here, one can feel the underground forces that once created the Great Rift Valley, and which continue to form it to this day. Further half hour car journey north, we discover Lake Baringo. Whilst the area around Lake Bogaria seemed wild and unpredictable, here the landscape is calm and there's a freshwater lake. In the midst of a floral paradise, the Lake Baringo Club. Scented blossoms colorful flowers and a manicured lawn make us forget that we are in the wild. However, the idyllic atmosphere holds a few dangerous surprises. Crocodiles lie idle and motionless on the edge of the camp like sculpted objects in the sun. Soon the water comes alive with crocodiles. It immediately becomes clear that this is not a visit to the zoo, but wild reality. and the urge to seek adventure, to explore the lake, makes us dare to go on a boat trip, in spite of the crocodiles and hippos. After heavy rainfall, Volcanic mud from the shores of the lake turns the water brown. The abundance of fish in the fresh water and the reeds which line the shores attract numerous birds. Thank you. 
Fish eagles fly overhead and watch as our small boat approaches the small island in the middle of the lake. Here, the fishermen of Njemps, whose livelihood is fishing, welcome us and proudly show us their morning catch. Their canoes are made of light wooden slats. Wooden planks are tied together to a curved bow and left open at the rear. The fishermen maneuver their boats with small hand paddles. Now the lake becomes rougher and our boat rocks about in the water. Suddenly a fish eagle follows us again and the boatman explains that it wants to be fed. and we experience a wonderful display, an unforgettable moment. Several hot springs remind us that we are still in the volcanic Great Rift Valley. Sulfurous steam escapes from the Earth's interior. As this lake is not alkaline, it suggests that it has underground drainage. Semi-desert and jagged volcanoes surround Lake Beringo which is today recognized as the country's premier bird viewing sanctuary. Only six hours drive from Nairobi is the most attractive game park in Kenya, Masai Mara. The visitor is accommodated and pampered in exclusive tented camps. Rightly so, the home of the Maasai is regarded as the most animal-rich and outstanding area of natural beauty. The tall and proud Maasai are herdsmen and keep cows and sheep but their main wealth is their children. They live in small villages known as kraals. Masai Mara forms the northern continuation of the Serengeti, the home of the Big Five, lion, leopard, elephant, buffalo and rhinoceros.
The Mara River is the lifeline of the reserve. Here, crocodiles lurk and wait for animals who come to cross the water or who just need a drink. Groups of hippos also spend most of their time in the water. They are called hippo schools, with young and old grouped together and making noises as though in conversation. From the jeep we search for large herds of game. Masai Mara was described as Hollywood's impression of typical Africa. Hunting lions, huge wildebeest and zebra herds on their way through the savannah. The safari is one of the biggest adventures which the dark continent has to offer. In 1961, the former British colonial government devoted 1,700 square kilometers of the Mara to advanced ecological planning and set it up as a national reserve. Each summer, the peaceful scenery changes. Dramatic scenes take place during the migration of the animal herds, from south of the Serengeti to north of Mara. Hyenas live in groups of 15 or more, dominated by one of the females, and fiercely protect their territory. Lions are the uncrowned rulers of the East African savanna. Here, the time-honored rules of nature still stand, to eat or be eaten. During the day, these elegant, strongly built wild cats take a rest in the shade of an occasional tree. However, they are active day and night, but only hunt when hungry. The typical Maasai Mara landscape is the savanna grassland, a vast open area sparsely punctuated by rocky outcrops. In the language of the Maasai, Tembo is the name for the sensitive and thick-skinned. The sight of this majestic jungle giant, the African elephant, is an unforgettable experience. The 
biggest of these land giants weighs up to six tons, yet prefers the tenderness of fresh green trees and bushes. This area, which was described so vividly and grippingly in Tanya Brixen's book Out of Africa, imparts an unmistakable feeling of déjà vu. Dust-covered groups of elephants cross the savanna grassland and, in the distance, the glistening snow-covered peak of Kilimanjaro. At the foot of Africa's highest mountain, the Amboseli National Park is a wonder of nature. An endless backdrop for Kenya's most spectacular game reserve. With a little luck, you can also watch a traditional Maasai tribal dance. In 1961, the British set up this 400 square kilometer national park with lions, elephants, rhinos, chimpanzees, buffalo and smaller game animals. The dried out lake, dusty thornbush savanna, and extensive lava fields create a bizarre landscape. Conversely, springs and swamps provide enough water for wild animals. Here it is a constant struggle to maintain the ecological balance of this unique animal and plant kingdom. It's uncertain for how long this will function. In the dry season, the park becomes a dust bowl. Shimmering heat creates imaginary water pools. The Amboseli Park has changed dramatically in recent years. Swamps have expanded in size and the beautiful acacia savanna has for the most part disappeared.
Selly, Kingdom of the Elephants. Elephant herds present a majestic picture and cover large areas across the savanna in order to reach their feeding grounds. Even though the Amboseli Park's habitat has altered, it is one of the best game reserves to observe elephants at close quarters. Bathing in the swamps and watching the elephants feed is the climax of every safari. The Maasai used to be able to graze their cattle here, but after many disputes, this area now belongs exclusively to the wild animals. Green steppes, shimmering red desert areas, snow-covered peaks. Africa is a land of contrasts. Lying between the dreamy beaches of the Indian Ocean and Mount Kenya, lies this kaleidoscopic country which does not let go of those who visit it. The author and big game hunter Ernest Hemingway wrote so aptly in his short story The Green Hills of Africa, all that I wanted now was to come back to Africa. Kenya. The Kingdom of the Golden Sun is ranked as one of the most fascinating holiday destinations on the planet. <laughs>